one of the seminars that I do, I always talk about the fact that I'll tell you my definition of one of my definitions of faith is having the a vision to see with your heart what you can't see with your eyes. And I talk about the fact that we have to have, you know, it says where there is no vision, the people perish. That's right. That we have to have the vision to see the opportunities that God puts before us. But then you have to have the boldness to seize the opportunities that God puts before you. Mm -hmm. And the simple fact of the matter is, with the Spirit of God indwelling you, you do have the boldness. The Holy but your flesh will often try and stop that. Yeah. The flesh will try and, well, it says, Squelch. Quench. 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 <laughs> well, you can maybe make up a new word. <laughs> but, you know, Paul wrote to the Thessalonians and said, don't quench the Spirit. Mm -hmm. So it's possible to do that. And the only thing that will do that is, is being led by your flesh rather than by God's yes. spirit. This is the core message of the Sermon on the Mount. Mm. Think about this. I'm gonna, I want to read to you, and I, I am getting ahead of myself a little bit. We're going to come back and we'll do this in much more detail later on. In Matthew 6, I'm going to read verses 24 to 33. Some verses, selected verses in there, right? In verse 24, it says, no one can serve two masters. And then Jesus says, you cannot serve God and mammon. Well, he says, for this reason, I say to you, do not be worried about your life as to what you will eat or what you will drink, nor for your body as to what you will put on. Don't worry. Do not worry then, it says in verse 31, saying, what will we eat? What will we drink? Or what will we wear for clothing? For the Gentiles eagerly seek all these things, for your heavenly Father knows that you need all these things. But seek first his kingdom and his righteousness, and all these things will be added unto you. Blessed are, we're talking about the Beatitudes, blessed are, blessed are, blessed are those who know that God blesses the poor in spirit. We're blessed when we know that he comforts those who mourn. Yes. We're blessed that he has prepared a place for his own who depend on his strength and power rather than their own. Mm -hmm. We're blessed that he satisfies those who seek his righteousness, pursue his righteousness. We're blessed that he is merciful towards us. Amen. And we are blessed that he calls us his own children. We know that we are blessed because it says in Galatians 3, Christ redeemed us from the curse of the law, having become a curse for us. For it is written, Cursed is everyone who hangs on a tree, in order that in Christ Jesus the blessing of Abraham might come to the Gentiles so that we would receive the promise of the Spirit through faith. God's purpose in our lives is blessing. Amen. Okay? Now, you know, he's called us to have purpose here in this life. Yes. Absolutely. But through all of that, he wants to bless us. Bless it's not us a chore. The abundant life. Because it's not a chore to serve him. No. It's not a burden to, mm -hmm. to serve. You know, we're not supposed to have the... This is why he can say to us, be anxious for nothing. Okay. Because it says, you know, cast your care on him because he cares for you. Right. There is no burden to serving God. No. The distraction is the enemy. Yes. And the enemy is the devil. The enemy is your flesh. Go look in the mirror and you'll see the one who bugs you the most. Mm -hmm. The blessings are there. And I don't want to say that there's a formula for it, but there's pretty much a formula for it. <laughs> Deuteronomy 28. Yes. If you hear his voice and you obey his voice, and then all of the blessings of God will come upon you. They'll overtake you. As you used to say, they'll, they'll flat, flat run you over. <laughs> well, it's it's so true. You see, I, I see Christians all over, and they are desperately searching for blessing. Mm, but I'm telling you, and it's like here, seek ye first the kingdom of God, and all the rest gets added to you. It's like that. If you are obeying God, you don't have to seek God's blessings. The blessings will seek you. They'll come after you. They'll overtake you. He'll bless you in the city. He'll bless you in the country. He'll bless you your spouse. He'll bless your children. He'll bless your, your work, the work of your hands. He'll bless everything in your life if you hear his voice and obey him. Yes. That's the formula. And it's not a burden. No. It is meant to be a 
blessing. <laughs>